millions check into hotels each year. Some check into another dimension. I'm the only human being in this place, and it's found out which room I'm in. I felt like something was going to hurt me. Did you die here? That's the ultimate. Alone, afraid, and helpless. When the experiences of thousands are contained within a single building, the laws of space and time are changed. Past invades the present, and fears turn to reality. strikes and a spirit is dragged into the dark paranormal dimension, so too go their secrets. And for those who go seeking to uncover those buried mysteries, the hunter can become prey. And at the Lemp Mansion, a famous Victorian hotel in Missouri, Paranormal author Rebecca Pittman is about to learn that lesson in the most terrifying way. I was there to research the book about Lemp Mansion. And it popped up as one of the top 10 most haunted places and a lot of uh, stories were circulating about things going on there. And so I traveled there to check it out. Built in 1868, it was home for nearly a century to the Lemp family millionaire beer barons. What started as basically a small home brewery really became a beer empire in St. Louis. But it's a success story with a very dark underbelly. And all the money in the world didn't help the family. Uh, many of the family members died of heart failure, and there were also four suicides. This was a very tragic family affair. Tracking down the mysterious details behind these tragedies is why the paranormal author has come here. Unsolved mysteries drive me nuts. I feel the research is key. If you don't understand that house, what it's been through, you only have half a story. I think you'll find these really helpful. Thank you. So they're handing me documents and photographs and diaries that weren't open to the general public. Thank you. If you experience ghosts and you don't understand who they are in relation to that property or what happened to them, what's the point? But what if hunting down the past makes you a target? All of a sudden, the candle on the mantle lit itself. The dead will find you, whether you go looking for them or not. They're on a mission to communicate. If you're in their territory, you are also in their crosshairs. They were kind enough to leave all the rooms unlocked so that I could just go around. The minute you stepped out in that hallway, it was almost like a shadow attached to you. The house engulfs you. The atmosphere engulfs you. I had heard stories of people hearing the portrait at the end of the hall moaning. You immediately feel like you aren't by yourself. There wasn't a time when I was there that I didn't feel like something was watching me. Pushing through her fears, Rebecca descends to the basement and continues with her research. I 
I felt like a voyeur that I was trespassing, that that family was still there. I can't explain it. It's a really strange feeling. You do feel a sense of sadness, and you feel a sense of loss. There's just this closeness that you feel when you're walking through there. Always felt somebody was right behind me. And there was nobody there. I can't tell you how often that you that I would turn around and do this, feeling somebody's there. The problem with digging up the past in a haunted hotel is you may not like what you find or what finds you. Who's here? I feel the hair standing up on my neck. I felt someone was about to touch my shoulder. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. No worries, it's fine. I just wanted to let you know that we're leaving now. Mondays, the place is closed and they had were kind enough to let me have it. But what I didn't know is the staff goes home. So it was a little scary. If an entity is looking to get to someone, it's a lot easier when you are alone and isolated than with a group. They have your undivided attention. I don't remember falling asleep, but I must have. I woke up because the whole bed was going sideways. A weight was pinning my feet down. It's terrifying if you're pinned to your bed by a human being. But can you imagine that you are immobilized by something you can't even see? I laid there with my heart pounding. Something's in the room with me. in St. Louis researching her new book on the notoriously haunted Limp Mansion Inn. Author Rebecca Pittman is suddenly stalked. By an unseen ghost. I'm the only human being in this place and it's found out which room I'm in. My hand was shaking at that point. Took all the courage I had to turn that light on. When something like this happens and you're terrified, no help was going to come. That's the ultimate, alone, afraid, and helpless. I thought, what if something's sitting there and it's looking at me? There was nothing there, and the weight was gone. Well, I was pretty scared. My heart was pounding. You're so afraid you're going to see it standing in the corner looking at you. And whatever it was left its mark. 
all I could see were two perfect shoe indentations in the blanket right next to my feet. Two perfect indentations. That's a very scary thing. This spirit wanted to leave a little calling card. Even though it didn't reveal itself, it left those two little footprints to tell her, I just did this to you. Thinking, OK, 5.30, they'll be here at 10. I still have all these hours alone. Spirits may pierce the veil between the living and the dead, using their pure energy and emotion to communicate. And that's driven by the need to convey information to the living. But what information is it trying to convey? In the morning, Rebecca asks to be moved to the Lavender Suite. Over a century ago, it was the master bedroom for William Lemp Sr. and his wife. So being in their room was chilling. It felt like, am I welcome here? Do they want me writing a book about them? An entity may not want to reveal itself to the people that it's targeting, and it likes that, hiding in the invisibility. You said you wanted company, so here we are. My sister lives in St. Louis, and she and her son was going to stay that night. It's the ultimate way to move around, torment, and if you can't see it, that's even more scary. Until it finally reveals itself. Suddenly, with this huge antique chandelier over the bed, it just started going crazy. I started videoing it with my cell phone. There's no way you could even turn a, a switch to make it do what it was doing. I started talking to it and asking it questions. If that's somebody making the light flash stop. I thought I would see if it would communicate with me. If that is somebody, can you make them start flashing again? And then I said, is there someone in the room? There was a slight time lapse, and then it blinked once. An intelligent haunting is one where the spirit is aware, and that can be the most dangerous because it is a scenario that is pulling you in personally and is directed at you. Are you someone that stayed in this room? it did one more time, and then it quit responding to me. Because of the room we were in, I believed it was in William Limp, communicating in some way. The question is, what's the message? It just felt like, this is insane. Look at all of the stuff that keeps happening. I just thought, this place is wicked haunted. It just felt like there was something going on everywhere. <laughs> I just sat up. It felt like ice water went through my veins. Right outside the door, I heard bang, 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 woo, really loud and my heart was just pounding. You're waiting to see what else is coming. Was it right there in the hallway? Your, your question, did I really hear that? <laughs> so I looked over, my sister's still asleep, but my nephew was up on his elbow. I said, did you hear those gunshots? Okay. You stay here. I open the door, and there's nothing. Could it have been a gunshot outside the house? And there's no way. It was right there in the hallway. <laughs> the 
There's no way not to be scared. <laughs> dig up buried secrets at the Lemp Mansion Inn in St. Louis. Author Rebecca Pittman now fears she's being forced to relive one of its darkest moments. The violent suicide of former owner William Lemp Sr. I got scared because I was standing where William Lemp shot himself. <laughs> When Rebecca hears gunshots in the middle of the night, she's tapping into the residual energy of William Sr.'s suicide. But what does the spirit that hunted her down want to tell her? I thought, why am I hearing this? Is this a clue that I'm supposed to unravel? If it is, why did she hear three gunshots? Wouldn't have kept shooting after he'd shot himself. Could it be the echo of the other two Lemp suicides? I knew three people had shot themselves in the house. On February 13th of 1904, William Lemp Sr. took his own life in that room by shooting himself in the head. 18 years later, William Lemp Jr. followed in his father's footsteps. Charles Lemp was the last of the Lemp's to kill himself. I couldn't help but feel a connection to the history of the people there and what was happening. I wanted to get a sense of what led them to such a tragic ending. Once back home, Rebecca keeps digging for answers. When I looked at the coroner report for William Lemp Sr., I literally went, oh my gosh. I went, what? He had to have missed twice before the fatal shot. William Lemp may have missed two shots when he attempted to commit suicide because he was nervous. He was hesitant, his hand was shaking, and he may have flinched at the moment he pulled the trigger the first two times. Nobody at Lent Mansion had heard that. None of the owners knew that part. And I'm sitting here going, this is insane. That changed the narrative of how he died. And it's exactly what was trying to be communicated to her that night. <laughs> Did you hear those gunshots? No, but I heard a dog barking. I said, no, there's no dog in the house. Police reports reveal that Charles Lemp shot his dog before killing himself. That's when the hairs just, I went, oh my gosh, there's the dog. Could have been, in Charles' own way, an act of compassion, not wanting to leave his dog behind without him. <laughs> Some believe the illegitimate child of William Lemp Jr. haunts the attic. I know for a fact whatever kicked my bed was not an adult. I know that it was a child. But why did these entities choose to reach out to Rebecca? I'd like to think maybe they thought I understood their story. And they were saying, we are still here. Here's pieces of our story. And the way the book is written, you can feel my empathy for these people. If anyone were to ask me, where do you think the hot spots are at Lent Mansion? I would just, just walk in the door. Uh, they're everywhere. It's one thing to be chased down by a spirit who knows you're digging for the truth. It's quite another putting yourself in its crosshairs just for a cheap thrill. Especially if you happen to head to rural America to visit a hotel famous for its wild west coasts. Like paranormal thrill seeker Brittany Maru and her mom, Desta Highbeck. I came to the hotel in 2017 for a night getaway with my daughter. 
Hello. We're just checking in, please. My name is Desta. I surprised her, and she was super excited about it. <laughs> I was really curious about the spirit world. Brittany is here <laughs> hoping to see a ghost or two. That would be amazing. When you register for the hotel, they do have a list of rooms that have paranormal activity. Thank you so much. At the hotel, my expectations were to prove that the paranormal was real. And she's come to the right hotel with the right past. For years, the town ran red with the blood of lawmen, outlaws, and innocent bystanders, all of whom some say still roam this old hotel. It was a very wild place back in the 1800s. But Desta isn't quite buying all the ghost hype. I was on the fence as a believer. I was 50-50. All the same, she picks what the hotel claims to be its most haunted room. This is great. There's nothing wrong with wanting to go to paranormal hotspots because you are interested in it. We call that legend tripping. The problem is that when you put yourself into the legend, you can become a target. In other words, paranormal prey. But I felt somebody was watching us. I looked around and I didn't see anybody. What's the matter? I don't, I don't know. I, I thought I saw some. If I knew then what I know now, I would have not checked in. I really didn't think anything was going to happen to us that night. Getting ready for bed. I had the room set on 65. I like a room cold. Mind you, it's winter time, and that's how I like to sleep. An entity will only place its trap in a location where it knows it will get prey. <sighs> Good night, sweetie. Good night. And what better place than a room where a weary traveler is vulnerable so that's where they are going to spin their paranormal web. <sighs> Disturbed in her sleep, Desta wakes to what feels like an inferno. <sighs> I checked the thermostat and it was set to 92. I'm like, why is this on 90 degrees? Turn it back down to 65. It seems like this could actually be an example of the ghost manipulating the electromagnetic field to be able to up that temperature to scare them away. Got the room cooled down, went back to bed. That's when I started getting scared. In a Midwest town once notorious for its outlaws and murderers, Desta Hybeck and her daughter Brittany Maru check into its most haunted hotel. This is great. On the hunt for a paranormal experience. But they soon realize be careful what you wish for. The TV flips on, and it's the snowy screen, and it was very loud. Did you turn on the TV? What? No. Do you have the remote there? No. The remote is way across the room. So I knew Brittany had not touched it, and I did not touch it. The TV just turned on. I, I didn't turn it on. I heard fuzzy noise coming from the snowy channel. If you think about it, a spirit is energy. So for it to manipulate other things that utilize energy, it's probably the easiest way for it to make itself known. Oh I thought the TV was on the fritz, so I unplugged it from the wall. Okay, well, I have no idea how that happened. That's creepy. What should have been a short night of sleep became the longest night of sleep in our lives. I heard this, it sounded like spurs on the back of cowboy boots. I'm like, 
Where is that sound coming from? And that's when I seen just something in my room. I felt very, very afraid. I felt like something was going to hurt me. What? Brittany says, Mom, there's a man standing in our corner. Do you, do you, do you see him? I don't see what you're talking about. I said, Brittany, I don't see anything. I could see every detail on him. You could see the badge. You could see a mustache. Oh, he's, he's right there. You really can't see him? I don't see it. And she kept saying, Mom, he's standing right there. I was very nervous. He's right in the corner. You don't see him? She was white as a ghost, and she was very frightened. Since Brittany was the one that was actually looking to have a paranormal experience, she's already more susceptible to one happening. That makes her an easy target for the activity. But it's not just Brittany. I kept hearing, answer your phone. What is going on? I looked around the room, and there was nobody in there with us. I was very scared at this point. I could hear a vibration of a phone. Is that your cell phone? No. Are you sure? She asked if my phone was ringing. No, no. My phone's dead. Oh, God. My phone is off. I don't understand what's going on. The fear that I felt at that time, I really wanted to just leave. I wanted to run out of that hotel and be, and not feel that fear anymore. The hair was standing up on my body. Oh my God, we have to get out of here. What is happening? Somebody did not want us in that room. There's a voice in the phone. What is going on? I, I don't know. Very worried about our safety at that point. <laughs> All of a sudden, I heard giggling in the hallway. Oh, God. Maybe there's somebody can help us. They were female giggles. <laughs> I looked out the hallway and there was nobody out there. Is something horrible going to happen to us? Is there more ghosts going to make their presence known? Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! I saw a woman that had no face. Oh my God! No eyes, no mouth, no nose. That's when I knew Brittany absolutely saw a ghost with the man in the corner. You're dealing with a time and a place that was probably not very pleasant for women. This entity is uh, warning them that they need to get out of there. But it may already be too late. It felt like I was paralyzed. Something has control of my body. Felt my arms move, so it was very uniformed. Mom! I couldn't move my head, I couldn't move my legs. Mom! What is happening? What? I tried shaking her, nothing would get her to move. She's just stiff as a board. This was something evil. Very horrifying. At a famously haunted hotel in the American Midwest, guests Desta Hybeck and Brittany Maru were hoping for a fun, ghostly encounter. This is great. Not to become prey for terrifying spirits. Something took over my body. The activity was escalating to the extremities. Hey, stop! What? Are you okay? What is happening? I was very, very scared. I'm like, okay, what is going on? Somebody let go of her. Oh my god! Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. 
Oh, are, are you okay? Something definitely was possessing my body. It invaded me completely. Mom, what is happening? In that moment, you are in the most dangerous possible paranormal situation because now you have lost your free will. Oh! Oh! Can you hear me? Are you? We were both yelling at each other. The fear in both of us at this point took over. You are under the control of some other force and you don't know what it could make you do. Help! This spirit was holding me against my will. The energy that was in that room didn't want to let her leave. They wanted to keep her. It was very terrifying. As Desta feels herself slipping away, something else enters the room. There is a blue light. Mom! And it released me. <sighs> and with it, whatever drove out that darkness is gone too. Whatever darkness was inside of her, it was gone. definitely feel like there was something there to relieve her of whatever was horribly attached to her. Oh, oh God. We have to get out of here. Okay, we have to get out of here now. At that point, I, I went and turned the lights on in the room. I saw nothing. Shaking with fear, they decide to get out as quickly as possible. We're leaving. I'm done. That was the fastest I've ever packed up a room. I think it took minutes. On the way home, free from the spirit's clutches, they take stock of their haunted hotel experience. I just really think these ghosts have not realized they've passed to the other side, and I think they're stuck here. <laughs> Like the ladies in the hallway. The hotel was a saloon back in the day, so when I heard the giggling, I thought maybe it was the women from back in the day giggling going up and down the hallway and, and coming from the saloon. Help! They try to make sense of the entity that paralyzed Desta. I thought maybe it was an evil spirit that did not want us there. And the blue light that seemed to free her? I put the connection together, like something was there to make sure whatever had a hold of her was not going to attach to her again. <sighs> when this blue orb enters into the room, what that could be is it could be some sort of protective spirit, uh, what some might call a guardian angel, coming in there to alleviate the situation and to break Testa and Brittany free. Some at the hotel believe the cowboy is the ghost of a sheriff that once ran the town. He was a protector, and he was there just checking on the guests in his hotel. After this experience, I'm a very strong believer of the paranormal, and it's out there. And if you think it can't happen to you, it can. It can happen to anybody. It definitely amped up my beliefs on the paranormal world, knowing that the spirit world exists, that they are walking around us all the time, and we just don't know about it. Oh, my God! When I go to stay at hotels now, I definitely do my research before I stay at it, and if it has any inkling of paranormal at it, I will not stay at it. I would never willingly put myself in that position again. Hunting down ghosts for kicks in a haunted hotel is one thing. 
But what if you check in with a serious mission? To prove they exist. And in the American Midwest, at a B&B &B with a seriously haunted reputation, Mike Walker and his wife are checking in to do just that. It's an old historic house, it's a beautiful house. We went there just to see if we can find anything, any proof of the paranormal there. The B&B &B is just a stone's throw from a battlefield, believed to be one of the most haunted in the state. Battlefields are often extremely haunted because they are sites of misery, violence, hatred. It can create whole areas that are potentially haunted just from that negative energy alone. Nothing Mike hasn't encountered before. I am retired from the military and I have been working in uh, state prisons for 27 years. I didn't really think the B&B was haunted. Hope you enjoy your stay. Should be fun. I was basically doing it for fun. It's the last room on the right. OK, thank you. There's a little weekend of, you know, venture. Turned out to be a lot more than that. As darkness falls, Mike and his wife go on the hunt. The owners of the B&B gave my wife and I free run of the house to investigate. Is anybody there? Did you die here? We were hoping to reach somebody that lived in the house over the past 150 years. The owner, child, anybody. When you have free reign over a location, you can actually design and set up the experiments that you want to do in order to see if you can make activity happen. My wife was uh, holding the, the electronic voice recorder, and she was asking questions, see if she can get a reply. What is your name? Investigation becomes a, a prime experience. It becomes something that you can't always get other places. And yet, the results are pretty much what Mike expected. You getting anything? Nothing. Not getting anything. We spent some time there trying to get voice recordings. What is your name? Uh, anything for the EMF detector, and nothing happened. Disappointing, given the owner's story about how haunted the b, &B is. Entering the paranormal world, it's like walking down a dark alley in a strange place. When there's a certain series of events that have the power to imprint on the environment, it's going to stay there. It's going to resonate. <gasps> you come in aggressive, things can escalate very quickly. In the American Midwest, in a B&B &B said by many to be haunted, <laughs> ghost hunters Mike Walker and his wife are there to find proof of the paranormal. So they decide to turn it up a notch. Let's go down to the basement. OK. The owners of the B&B &B said, when you go down in the basement, you'll experience more paranormal activity down there than you would anywhere else in the house. Basements are considered to be the heart of the haunting because that is where the power seems to be. It 
it has all the right minerals in it to record and amplify energy, and it basically becomes one big paranormal recording device. The further they go, the more Mike senses they're not alone. I started feeling very uneasy there. And I never felt like that before in my life. There was nothing being moved about the, the basement at all. There was absolutely nothing that would point to me being that uneasy. When people encounter this type of a feeling, and you just know, this is not an entity I want to encounter. I was creeped out. I was totally creeped out. What's the matter? Come sit down, come. You okay? Here, take this. She passed the voice recorder off to me while she went around taking pictures with her tablet. This is the actual audio recording that Mike captured in the basement. And we're still in the basement. The EMF detector wasn't going off, and there was no movement other than my wife and I. I don't even know how you can see dark shadows when you're in the dark. Really, really black down here. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, they pick up something. And that's when it happened. The EMF detector kept building and building. I felt like I wanted to crawl out of my skin. I want to get out of this basement. What's in the room? What entities in this room? That's my breathing a lot through his nose. Get freaked out. I felt a sharp pain in my hand, and all of a sudden, the EMF went flying. Please turn the light on. I'm getting freaked out. It was kind of frantic. I wanted the lights on immediately. I felt like something hit my hand. Something hit your hand? There's a bruise. Right there. Oh, my. What the heck would just strike out and knock a EMF detector out of somebody's hand? Because I knew it wasn't my wife. Clearly, the message that is being conveyed is, I'm in charge and I can hurt you if I want. Let's see. I interpret that as a warning. I interpret that as, get out of here. In the light of morning, they check out Mike's hand. Looked at my hand, and the mark was a raised red bruise. That mark is from something paranormal hitting my hand. Mike later hears about a Confederate soldier who's said to haunt the basement of the B&B. Yeah. He was a Confederate general, and he had raiders, and they basically uh, went on raiding parties and stopped at this bed and breakfast on his way to battle but for Mike, one thing is perfectly clear. The 
They'll know who it was. There was something down there. They didn't want me or my wife detecting them down there. I didn't believe in the paranormal until we had an experience there. And then I started believing in it, that there's actually something out there. This uh, experience changed me because it shows that the paranormal has an evil side to it. Ugh. Something to consider if you ever get the idea to chase down a ghost. Sometimes they bite back. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>